Welcome back to my channel and in today's video we will be making some easy homemade applesauce as well as a quick and easy breakfast or on the go snack. Hello everyone, I am so glad each one of you are here and in today's video we will be making some homemade applesauce. Uh, we really love applesauce around here and homemade is always better than the store-bought ones so we're just going to go ahead and make some. I had a bushel of really nice apples um, that I wanted to make into some sauce so just for reference these are honey crisp apples. Um, they make more of a tart applesauce if that's something that you like and if you prefer a more sweeter applesauce um, go ahead and get more of a sweeter apple just all depends on your liking so I have my little helpers here today we're going to um, just kind of take the day and see where it takes us so the first thing that we're doing of course is just washing all the apples and then I am quartering them before I put them in my big kettle here and then I'm just putting them on the cooktop with a little bit of water on the bottom of the pan then once they start to kind of boil um, just put them down to like a medium heat and then let them simmer and uh, the apples will kind of make more juice as they kind of cook down and you want to cook them I think I did for around 20 minutes or so just till the apples get nice and soft and then while those are cooking we're just going to get my second kettle uh, ready here Chloe is washing the apples and then I'm just quartering them kind of cutting out all the bad spots um, some of them had stickers on them like they would when you buy them at the store I'm just taking all of those off and just making sure they're nice and clean before I put them in my big kettle And again, I'm just adding a little bit of water to the bottom of the pan, maybe a half inch to an inch, um, basically just so the apples don't stick to the bottom of the kettle before they kind of make their own juice. Um, I didn't have a problem with them sticking at all this way. And then you can definitely hear them once they start cooking. And then you can just go ahead and turn the burner down a little bit to more of a medium heat. While those are cooking and I'm kind of um, just waiting on those, I'm going to go ahead and make some oatmeal um, little cups, kind of like a breakfast cup or just an on-the-go snack. It's just a good snack to take with you. And I did have some bananas that needed to be used up anyway, so I thought this would be a perfect little snack to make to keep on hand here. And the children actually really loved them. Um, so it's four bananas. Um, mine were pretty ripe and then three cups of oatmeal and then a table a teaspoon of vanilla and then you can do whatever kind of add-in you want I added in some mini chocolate chips and then I will be adding um, a nice topping on top of these as well you can do whatever you want and then in the meantime, um, I kind of went back and forth to the apples, just kind of giving them a stir every now and then to make sure everything was good. And now back to our oatmeal bites. I'm going to cut one of these apples, peel it, and then slice it up really thin um, in little pieces to put on top of some of the oatmeal bites. And then I'm using my mini muffin pan. This keeps it more bite-sized and a little easier to handle and things. Um, so I'm just scooping with my little cookie scoop, a scoop of our oatmeal mixture into each muffin pan. 
Um, I did spray it really well with cooking spray first of all, just so they don't stick. And then once I have them in the pans, Chloe helped me put some of the apples on top of each one. And then we also put a few more chocolate chips on top. So we did some of the oatmeal bites in the apple flavor, and then a few in strawberries. And then the last row we did in blueberries. All of these were really good. Um, so you could definitely add whatever kind of fruit or whatever kind of toppings you would want. These are ready to put in the oven and I'm just baking these for around 18 to 20 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. So while those are baking, we're just going to head back to our apples, give them another good stir. And these were getting really close to being ready to be mashed. So once they were soft enough, um, I'm just going to pour them into a big bowl here that I have in the sink. Um, just to let them cool off a couple of minutes. And while I'm letting them cool, I'm going to go ahead and slice up the rest of these apples and put them into um, the kettle that we just dumped out. Our little oatmeal bites were done at this time and look how they turned out. They're actually pretty cute and they were really good. Um, the children even liked them. And now we are going to get our little Victoria strainer set up and mine is really pretty old. Um, I have it mostly just because of sentimental reasons, but it works fine and hey, it did my apples, so that's all that counts. Um, but I will try to link one below that is similar to this one. Um, I think this one is missing a few parts, but it works for um, what I need. But I will definitely link one similar uh, down below in the description for you um, if you're looking for something like this. This one worked really well um, for what we needed today. So we're just getting everything set up, getting getting it ready to go. Um, I had to use more of a narrow uh, bowl so that the peelings and stuff wouldn't drip into our applesauce. Um, we had to get a little creative there um, for our peeling bowl, but it worked in the end. So now we're just scooping up our softened of apples into the hopper up top and then we'll get to making applesauce. And I know this looks like a really slow process in getting the applesauce um, made out of the apples here, but it actually went pretty quickly. I was surprised. And it seemed like in no time we had all of the apples done already, um, and we got a fair amount of applesauce in the end.
So here is all the applesauce that um, one bushel of apples made. And at this point, you can go ahead and add some sugar if you want to. Go ahead and taste your applesauce, see if you want it sweetened. I personally just left it um, because we like more of a tart applesauce and I don't mind it uh, without sugar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it poured into my quart jars. And if you wanna preheat your quart jars beforehand, go ahead and do that as well. Once all of the applesauce was in the jars, I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe down the rims of the jars, making sure there's no remaining applesauce um, on the rims. And as I was wiping, I found one jar that was chipped pretty bad here on the side. So we're gonna go ahead and just dump that jar out into a new jar, um, cause that one probably won't seal anyways. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just get that one um, put away. And then we're going to put all of our lids and rings onto our jars, getting them ready to um, can. For my applesauce, I'm going to can them in a hot water bath. And basically what this means is um, we're going to put them in the canner here. We can get seven quarts in at a time. Once we have those in, we're going to just fill this up with water until our jars are completely covered. And then you'll want to just turn on your burner, get that water cooking. While we are waiting for that water to boil, I'm just going to kind of clean up here in the kitchen, um, take apart our little Victoria strainer and get things cleaned up here um, while we wait. And then once our canner is cooking to a good rolling boil, I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for 20 minutes. So we're gonna let this boil for 20 minutes. Once that is done, you can take your jars out of your canner. I'm just putting them on a tea towel here, and then we'll let these set here for a good 24 hours before we take the rings off. Once those are out, I'm just going to start my next batch. And I did get 14 jars of applesauce out of that batch. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time. Bye!